Hello children, welcome back to English English with Kashish. How have you all been? How is everyone at home? I hope all of you are happy, healthy and are taking care of yourself. We are waiting for the schools to start but don't worry, we are there with all your chapters covered and anything, any question that you have, we are always there for you. We are going to start with your first language chapter. No, it's a poem. Yes, the first language poem, The Stolen Boat. It's written by a very, very famous poet whose name is William Wordsworth. Now, William Wordsworth used to include a lot of nature in his poem. Yeah, so let's find out what he has for us in this poem. Now, I'm going to tell you something about my life. Okay, once what happened was I was a small little child and at that time, when I was playing with my toys, my sister came in and she also wanted to play with me. Now, I didn't want her to touch my toys. So, what did I do? I took all my toys, put in a bag, closed the bag, put it in the cupboard and I told her, I don't want to play anymore now. Now, was that a right thing to do or was that a wrong thing to do? Absolutely wrong. But by evening, I started feeling very, very bad. I started feeling that why did I do that with her? I could have shared my toys with her. We both could have been happy together. What did I do? I made her sad. So, this is an example. When you do something bad, sometimes you feel bad. Don't you feel bad by the later part of the day? You feel like you shouldn't have done that. Sometimes you go and hit your friend. You feel bad? You feel guilty after some time? Yes, so when you do something bad, inside in your heart, you will always feel bad, correct? By the night, you will feel very, very unhappy, sad, you won't get sleep sometimes, you will get nightmares sometimes, that why did I do something bad to someone, isn't it? So if you steal some, something from a shop, you feel bad, don't you? That why did I do it? I shouldn't have done that. Yes, so this poem is just about that. Let's see who does something bad. So, we will read about poet a little bit. William Wordsworth, he survived from 1770 to 1850, is considered one of the greatest poets of English literature. Wordsworth and his friend S.C. Coleridge, by their joint publication of the lyrical ballets, became the harbingers of the romantic movement in English literature. Lots of achievements. The episode of the stolen boat is based on the experience of Wordsworth's early boyhood days. This is an extract from book one of Wordsworth's great philosophical poem, The Prelude. What is an extract? It's a piece taken from a book. He would have written a lot of poetries in this book, The Prelude. So, the stolen boat is one of the extract from that book. Now, this poem is about himself when he was a little boy. One summer evening. So, I have divided the whole poem into a line by line phrase. Okay. So, one summer evening led by her. I found led by whom? Led by the evening. What did he find? Let's see. A little boat tied to a willow tree. He found a little boat which was tied to a tree. Now, what is a willow tree? A tree that grows near water with thin flexible branches. It has lot of branches like that. So, the boat was tied to the willow tree. Within a rocky cove, its usual home. What's a cove? It's a cave kind of a thing inside where they put the boat. That was her usual home. Straight eye unloosed. What did he do? Unloosed. It, he made it loose or undo something. Okay. Her chain and stepping in. Was it his boat? No. What did he do? He went to someone else's boat. He removed the chain. He untied the chain. Was that right thing to do? No. But why did he do that? It was wrong. Let's see what happens next. He stepped into the boat. Pushed from the shore. It was an act of stealth. So, here comes the part. He pushed it off the shore. It was not his boat. He sat on it. He pushed it. Was, it is an act of stealth. It is an act of wrong. Yes, bad. So, it gives him troubled pleasure. 
Sometimes when you do something, it yes, it gives you that thrill, it gives you the pleasure, but by the end of the day, it's wrong, isn't it? And troubled pleasure, nor without the voice. It was a pleasure, but there was no voice to it, right? He did not say it at that time. Of mountain echoes did my boat move on. What happened? His boat started moving. Yes, and he could see all the mountains around him. Leaving behind her still on the other side. It was standing still at her, her, its usual home. But what did he do? He started moving him. So he left the stillness behind and started to row the boat. Small circles glittering idly in the moon. So what did he see? When he was seeing in front, he could see this kind of scenario where small circles of the waves were, it looked like a glitter, okay, near the moon. So it tells us that it was evening time. Until they melted all into one track. So this is the scene of the river. First you see all the waves and then when you are moving towards it, it looks like all of them are still now, isn't it? Of sparkling light, but now like one who rose. He could see the sparkling light of the moon falling down and he was rowing the boat. Proud of his skill to reach a chosen point. Now he was feeling very proud the way he was rowing the boat. He was feeling peaceful. He could see everything was so beautiful and very, very nice. And he was very proud that the way I'm doing it, look at that, I'm a master in it. With an unswerving line, I fixed my view. Now, what is unswerving like? Unswerving is steady, constant, straight. So, he was going straight. He was just doing what he was liking. I fixed my view. What did he do? He looked straight, absolutely straight. Upon the summit of a craggy ridge. Now he came to a mountain, a summit. What did he do? He came to a path where upon the top of a craggy ridge. Craggy ridge. Craggy ridge is a sty barrow craig in England. It's a big mountain there in England, right? Craggy ridge. So he came near the top of the mountain. The horizon's all utmost boundary far above. And it seemed like, what is horizon? Horizon is skyline. Now the skyline is there. It's meeting. He was feeling like he's coming close to the skyline. Far above. It was, it was really far, but he was moving towards it very far. So it seemed like it, it was coming close to him. And what was next to him? Craggy Ridge, the mountain was nothing but the stars and the grey sky. Now what would, could he see? He could only see the sky with lots and lots of stars. And what was the colour of the sky? Grey. She was an elfin pinnock. What is elfin pinnock? That is a small fairy like boat. What has he described his boat like? A fairy like small boat. Lustily passionately with great happiness. Now he is very, very happy about it. He is very happy the way the boat looks and the way he was riding the boat. I dipped my oars into the silent lake. What did he do? He dipped his oars. Oars are these. Long poles with flat ends which are used to row the boat. See this? You have seen oars before on a boat. How do you row a boat? With the oars. What did he do? He dipped his oars into the silent lake. And as I rose upon the stroke, and as he was stroking the oars, my boat went heaving through the water like a swan. His boat went into the water as swiftly. What is heaving? Rising up. His boat went up. And have you ever seen a swan? How does a swan go in the water? Up and down. So, same way, as soon as he put the oars in the water, even his boat went up and down. When from behind that craggy steep till then, 
what happened from behind? That craggy steep, that mountain, you remember the big mountain that came. The horizons bound, a huge peak, black and huge. What is a huge peak? The black craig. Now, the horizon was there, the skyline, you remember? And a huge peak, the black craig, the mountain, you remember the mountain, black and huge. Now, because it was turning dark. Now it was getting little dark. He started in the evening. Now it's dark. What did the mountain look like? A big mountain, black. It was getting a little scary, right? As if with voluntary power, instinct, filled with, as if for him the mountain seemed like powerful, as if it had lots of powers in him. Appeared at its head. What did it do? Appeared. What is appeared? Rise up, raise up its head. I struck and struck again. Now, what did the mountain do? It's raised its head. So, even this boy, what did he do? He put his head up and he again started striking and striking. I struck and I struck and I struck again. And growing still in stature, the grim shape. Now, it was growing still, that means continuously, it's growing, growing, growing. As he kept coming close to the mountain, the mountain grew continuously, right? In stature, in height. What is stature? It's height. So, it kept growing in its height. The grim shape, the frightful, the fierce shape. Now, for him, the mountain had become like a ghost, a big black ghost. As he was going closer to the mountain, it was becoming bigger and bigger in height. He was starting to get scared now. Towered up between me and the stars and still. Now, what was between him and the stars? What is towered? It means rose up like a tower. It looked like it's growing up like a tower. Between me and the stars. He was so nicely enjoying the stars in the sky. But then came this mountain, which kept growing in height as he kept ke coming closer to him. For so it seemed with purpose of its own. It seemed like that mountain had some purpose and was thinking something. And as it was very powerful, what could be the purpose? Maybe to destroy the little boy, right? And measured motion like a living thing. And now, is mountain a living thing? Does a mountain breathe? No, but it looked like something living in that mountain and it was coming closer. It was walking closer to that boy as if some big monster is walking towards him. Strode after me with the trembling oars I turned. What is strode? Strode is walked with long steps and now this boy felt like he is coming with long step towards the boy. This mountain, this big, big, gigantic mountain is coming close to the boy. What would happen to you when you get scared like that? You run back home, right? When you get scared somewhere in the dark, what do you do? You run back. So, even this little boy started tre with trembling oars. Trembling means shaking. His hands were shaking. When his hands were shaking, obviously the oars were also shaking. He turned. And through the silent water stole my way. And actually, the silent water, he could not even see where he was going. Back to the covert of the willow tree. He came back to the covert. Covert is hidden place. You remember the hidden place where the boat was hiding? He came back to the place. There in her mooring place, I left my bark. In that particular place, place of shelter where the boat is usually tethered for safety. In her place of safety, that particular place was the safety of the boat. What did he leave? He left his boat. I left my boat. In that place where that boat was supposed to go, he left his boat too. And through the meadows homeward went in grave. Meadows are the grass line, right? All the grasslands that you can see. So, he went through the grasslands towards his home in grave and serious mood. He had gone with a very wicked mood to do some mischief, but he came back in a very silent mood, scared mood, frightened mood, serious mood. Did, was he happy about what he has done? No, he was not. But after I had seen that spectacle, 
what is that spectacle it's a sight but after he, what sight is he talking about the mountain the big mountain that he is talking about for many days my brain what happened for many days his brain worked with a dim and undetermined sense when you do something like this when you come back home for some days this particular thought keeps running on your mind isn't it so you can't even think what i need to do so for some days he was only thinking about this episode this frightening episode that he went through of unknown modes of being over my thoughts or this is o v e r this is a poet's language okay there hung a darkness call it solitude for so many days it was his mind was completely dark his thoughts were only negative call it solitude what is solitude loneliness with so many people being around him also he felt lonely he felt that he's done something very wrong so he was very lonely or blank desertion what is blank desertion it's like devoid of thought as he could not think straight his thoughts were very disturbed or puzzled no familiar shapes correct because it's puzzled have you seen a puzzle no shapes so he was thinking just random thoughts remained no pleasant images of trees for him even beautiful trees looked sad and bad of sea or sky whatever he was seeing he was seeing a tree it looked dark to him he was seeing the sky the beautiful sky it looked sad to him even the sea was looking sad to him because he had just gone there and come no colors of green fields his fields were not green at all he could see no colors in himself because he was seeing only negative black thoughts but huge and mighty forms that do not live but huge and mighty forms for him even a tree was like a big huge form for him a sea was like a big huge form which had no life which do not actually live for him everything was scary like living men moved slowly through the mind as if everything was moving in his mind in a very negative approach by day and what a trouble to my dreams so uh, for a long time this boy was troubled everything around him was looking scary to him so uh, that's the end of the story which tells us that we should not be doing something stealthy which means something which gives us a little time of happiness but in long term it might affect our thoughts always be careful of what you speak or what you do whatever you are doing think twice and do it it should not hurt your feelings and it should not hurt someone else also only then you will be able to sleep happily peacefully smiling okay can i have a promise for that from all your children that all of you will only live to make yourself and others happy yes okay children so here we finish the poem i hope you have understood the poem in the next video i'm going to solve all the questions for you from your book so i'll see you next bye bye